It's a state. I've been consistent from the very beginning. What I said is I want to be strong in Iowa. I want to be even stronger in New Hampshire. And then I want to be stronger so in that strong in New Carolina. Hampshire doesn't mean necessarily winning it, just being a strong second? We won't know until the numbers come Fair out. Fair enough. But making sure that we continue to be strong. I want to be stronger than I was in Iowa. And then we're going to South Carolina. That was Nikki Haley on Fox News downplaying a raft of recent polling that shows her trailing Donald Trump by double digits in New Hampshire ahead of tomorrow's primary. Joining us now, contributor to the conservative website, The Bulwark, Tim Miller. He previously served as communications director for Jeb Bush and spokesman for the Republican National Committee. Tim, good to see you this morning. So you wrote about Nikki Haley in your last piece uh, for The Bulwark. You wrote about the challenges and obstacles she faces in New Hampshire. Give us your diagnosis. Look, I mean, obviously uh, she ran a better campaign than Ron DeSantis did, uh, Jonathan, <laughs> but uh, there's not much, uh, that's not enough to win the nomination, right? And if you look at her coalition in New Hampshire, it's just not a winning Republican coalition. It's, it's one I kind of wish was a winning Republican coalition. She has you know, a handful of anti-Trump Republicans. She's doing well with undeclared voters, people that are going to cross over to vote in a Republican primary. But there aren't a lot of those voters in the other states. And if you just look at the way that the party has coalesced around Donald Trump, uh, you know, what I call the new MAGA establishment, uh, Donald Trump's been getting the endorsements from even Ron DeSantis, who he mocked throughout the whole campaign. Uh, you know, he got them from Tim Scott and Marco Rubio, you know, the uh, Fox and the other major conservative media sites are, are rallying around the flag. Nikki Haley is kind of running around with Judge Judy and Chris Sununu and, and Larry Hogan. <laughs> that, that's just, that's not what the Republican Party is in 2024. You mentioned New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu, and he's been a staunch opponent of former President Trump and backing Nikki Haley. But, Tim, just days before his state's critical primary, he folded when pressed on whether he would back Trump if Trump were to be the party's nominee. Take a look. I don't care what political party you're from, whether you're an extreme conservative or, or socialist liberal, everybody should be concerned with that type of mentality going into the White House. And yet you are saying if he is the nominee that you are going to support him. How can you say that you'll support Look, him? At, at the given end of the day, I think most, most Republicans statement? are going to get, get behind the Republican nominee. I'm hoping that it's obviously uh, Nikki Haley. Despite no. his comments on immunity, despite what you said about the insurrection, you would still vote for Donald Trump in a general I, election? Well, against according Joe to Biden? the polls, most of America would. So, Tim, that's just it, right? That's the Republican Party in 2024. Yeah, that's a Nikki Haley surrogate you just showed, her best one. Uh, you know, I just, it's kind of breathtaking, really, the cowardice of, of, of these folks. And, and I, what Chris Sununu is doing, in my opinion, is actually more damaging than what a MAGA Republican endorsing Trump would do. I, you know, he's kind of giving cover for these swing voters in the general election, saying, well, I prefer Haley, but, but still Trump is better than Biden. I, I, I think that's... Uh, extremely damaging. I don't think he really believes it. I think that it's also false. But this is what these guys feel like they need to say to stay relevant. And that's why, you know, when Ron DeSantis drops out yesterday, you see kind of in minute three of his uh, of his concession video, you know, him saying that he's he's for Trump because he doesn't want to go back to the corporatist GOP. Like what? Like what are you even talking about? You're worried about Nikki Haley wants corporate tax? I, it doesn't even make sense. But, but they're just trying to come up with a post, uh, you know, a post facto rationalization for supporting somebody that tried to, you know, overthrow our democracy. Right. And you mentioned Tim Scott. He also uh, just backed uh, Trump. Um, you know, he had sort of kept his, uh, kept quiet for a few weeks. Um, it, you know, it's significant when he delivered it, you know, before New Hampshire, not even waiting to South Carolina. Of course, Tim Scott and Nikki Haley have a long relationship, but yet Scott still backing Trump instead. Haley, of course, appointed him to the Senate when she was governor at the time. Here's how Haley reacted. Look, this is everybody has a decision to make and they have to live with their decision. He'll have to live with his. What I know is we're going to continue to go forward. Trump has focused a lot of time on getting as many Washington insiders, elected officials endorsements as he can. So there we have it. Another another evidence to your point, Tim, of Republicans crawling back to Trump. And you mentioned DeSantis. Give us, I mean, this is someone who Trump called Ron DeSanctimonious and Meatball Rob and every other breath for almost a year now. And as you say, he instantly, instantly endorsed, endorsed Trump. So beyond just what that says about today's GOP, give us your postmortem for the DeSantis campaign. 
Yeah, well, firstly, uh, just the cowardice of both Scott and DeSantis. I and mean, these guys didn't even try. None of these folks even tried to run a campaign against Trump. They're all folding before the first primary. We've only had one caucus. It's just utterly shameful that, that this is the timing of these endorsements. As far as DeSantis, I, I think he missed a big opportunity to get in the race right after the midterms and to take advantage of the momentum from that. Instead, he had this Florida legislative session uh, that he spent six months working on trying to get to Donald Trump's right on the culture war. You can't get to Donald Trump's right on the culture war. I, we learned that in 2016. For some reason, Ron DeSantis decided to run Ted Cruz's campaign with even less personality. <laughs> I, I, that was doomed for the start. I, I don't really understand why that was a strategic approach. I think had he had he started to run right after November and run just on electability, you know, their success in Florida versus the failure of all the Donald Trump candidates probably still wouldn't have happened because of his not so great candidate skills. But I think he would have had a much better shot. And Tim, lastly, you know, New Hampshire is tomorrow. Uh, what do you think? Do you see any scenario where Haley could, could pull a surprise, either with an upset win or a narrow loss? Or is she going to get lose by double digits and we're going to wake up Wednesday morning and she's going to probably bow out so she doesn't get humiliated at home in South Carolina? And the race, the primaries will already be over. Yeah, I think it already is over, unfortunately. I, look, she, she could surprise. My, my, if I was betting, I would say that she's going to lose by more than 10. But, you know, who knows what those undeclared voters in New Hampshire are going to do? There isn't really a meaningful Democratic primary. Are enough of them going to cross over? You know, I wrote in that article for the Bulwark, we did focus groups with MSNBC viewing undeclared voters who might strategically vote for Haley because they don't like Trump so much. And good on you. That's what I would do if I was in New Hampshire, too. But it's, it's like, OK, even if she does do surprisingly well on the back of those undeclared voters, then what? Uh, there aren't a lot of those folks in South Carolina and Super Tuesday. And so I think it, it still is a really tough road ahead. Yeah, and Trump up 10 in New Hampshire, but polls in subsequent states, including South Carolina, up 20, up 30, up 40. Yeah. Uh, there's no real race here at all. Tim Miller, great to talk to you this morning. Come back soon.